Well, hey everybody, this is Chad Jordan from Sport Clips. Uh, this is another edition of the Hall of Fame episode. So glad to have you with us. If you're watching on YouTube, hello. Um, and I, and in a second, I'm gonna introduce my guest, but let me tell you what we're doing. We are out here in the Washington, D.C. area. Last night, Sport Clips got to host a special dinner. It's with part of the Aletheia Foundation. It's dinners that they put on Friday nights down here, I think. Is it always in Washington, D.C. area? It is. Okay. Uh, so the dinners get put on, and they're, they're for servicemen and women that are recovering at Walter Reed Hospital and their families that get to come uh, have this great dinner and kind of hang out. And uh, last night we had fun. We had prizes. We had raffles. <laughs> only uh, we didn't let ugly people come claim the prizes, so only the good-looking people got to come. We we just had a blast. It was and, a rowdy crowd. Uh, it was. It was. It was. It was rowdy. It was full. Um, the drinks were flowing. I had my Mountain Dew on the side that I kept sipping. But we had a. Uh, There's some cute kiddos at the, uh, all around. Got some firefighter hel uh, helmets from uh, <laughs> one of our team leaders, Jeff Burrows and, and Robin Hansen. Just a great night and a great cause that Sport Clips loves to uh, to sponsor and loves to help out with. So uh, at the event, we decided we would love to connect and especially interview some of the guests of honor from last night, and uh, and that's who I have with me uh, right now. So uh, I'm going to have you introduce, and even though one of them is off camera, uh, I'll have you introduce him as well. So uh, who do I have with me here? So uh, my name is. Pete Way, and I am a uh, retired U.S. Army, and I am accompanied today by my service dog, Rory Semper, who is uh, off camper, ca uh, off camera, uh, laid out, laying out on being the floor. a good boy. Yeah, uh -huh. being, being, he's fed and happy. So you know, speaking of fed and happy, I was so impressed last night. We had uh, we had appetizers. We had the the main course was steak. It was a big steak. Uh, a huge. I don't think anybody. I didn't see one. I don't know if you finished yours. I certainly. Didn't I didn't, I couldn't. So <laughs> how that little guy over there? He's not little, but how that guy over there kept himself from jumping up on the table and <laughs> I, I, the the restraint uh, involved. There's no way a normal dog could have handled uh, what Rory did. So. Yeah, and uh, that he, he points out the difference in yeah service dog versus a normal yeah, dog. He, he was a good boy. He, he was amazing. <laughs> Uh, so, um, you're, you're here today for a number of reasons. You are currently, uh, well, obviously you're a serviceman, uh, you you said you're with the army, uh, major, yeah. retired, retired major, okay, yeah. retired major, which uh, your last name is, is way. Yeah. W-A-Y so too. I, nice I, and sweet. I like, I, I, <laughs> when, when I found out I got to interview you, I was like, yes, I've been wanting to interview him in a major way Ooh. anyway so uh pun intended yeah uh, man, so, am I. so i'm sure you've heard a, a million of those but uh so a uh, retired major from you said the army what did you do in the army uh did a couple of different things uh started out life in the uh, chemical corps so i was a nuclear biological and chemical uh warfare Holy moly. specialist yeah nice huge uh huge term and uh, the reality was that was kind of one of those things that uh, used to joke NBC stood for nobody cares mm -hmm. uh, so we where, were, where, uh, where is there like only one base that you could have been assigned to I mean that is uh, like actually a... all over pretty much every okay. base uh, you get uh, had uh, particularly in the in the uh, 90s okay. you know with the uh, Cold War uh, we still had uh, fears yeah, you know, oh, uh, rogue any one miss, of those yes, threats. Yeah, yeah, you know, and so it was a big, uh, it was a big deal, and so you had specialists in uh, pretty much in every unit in that area. So it was a, uh, it was just one of those things. The training for it was hard. Uh, nobody liked to wear the protective equipment, so you were not, uh, you didn't make a lot of friends uh, doing your job. What what drew you to that? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> the okay. Army. You got the army. Okay. Um, so when I got this that, is back uh, in the nineties when the <laughs> army didn't let you pick anything. Right? Yeah, this was when that that assignment came back, and it's kind of like. The what? Dower. <laughs> <laughs> so didn't even know they existed or what they did. What well, the had you, as a kid, had you grown up wanting to be in the army? Is that a, is it a family tradition or what? What? How did we, that happen? Yeah, we definitely family has a tradition of service for sure. Uh -huh. um, my brother. Well, my father was an Air Force uh, veteran of the Korean War, okay. um, and then he went on to become an Episcopal priest. Um, 
and my brother was a uh, Vietnam veteran. Um, late, uh, he's an older brother, so he yeah. was uh, uh, not long after I was born. He was serving in Vietnam. Wow! And then, then uh, it was for me. It was more. Um, I knew those things, and then like a lot of kids, grew up playing Army. Um, yep. I'm not sure why I didn't play Marine Corps or Air Force. Mm -hmm. Just saying, mm -hmm. <laughs> not to rag on my fellow services there, but uh, the uh, it was something I thought about, but just wasn't wasn't really. Uh, you know, I'd like to say there was some noble goal, but when when I actually joined, it was for money. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah right out of high school. Kind of, yeah, or, it was, yeah, it was okay. uh, it was not it was long after I kind of went 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 straight off to college and and floundered badly. Uh, you know, flunked out, needed some discipline and direction. Um, and so uh, when I was getting back into, trying to get back into college, uh, you know, found the uh, ROTC program um, and simultaneously found the Georgia National Guard. And so I uh, was able to, uh, to get in the Georgia National Guard and uh, enroll in ROTC. Uh, and then, um, that sort of gave me the direction and uh, uh, the discipline that I needed to uh, to kind of figure out what I wanted to do in life. I mean, you know, even if the army wanted me to do something yeah. completely different, uh, so that that got things started. So, uh, did you enter as an officer then? I, yeah, or I, how does ROTC? It was kind of dual ROTC. Yeah. You're you're in the program to being an officer, and then you still got to do uh, basic. George and all National that stuff. Guard, you you know, joining the guard just. Uh, outright with no uh, no skills uh, mm. you know whatsoever then uh, uh, you know you come in there enlisted and uh, get to experience uh, experience that side of things and so even though it was brief uh, you know I was in the in the guard for a couple of years before I became an officer it really set some I think some good foundations for being an officer having been on the you know the uh, the other side and uh, and done you know done those jobs to right. some degree so I think it gave me a better appreciation for uh, for who I was expected to lead and and be the example for you mentioned you started off in this one career field in the army you end up where yeah I drifted from that uh, to uh, actually got out for a while okay um, so, uh, so you became the, a civilian yeah so the course of, of ROTC they uh, um, when I graduated I got active duty with the with the chemical corps yeah and that sent me out to Fort Carson uh, in Colorado which was uh, which was its own new adventure mm -hmm. um, never having been to the uh, to the Rocky Mountains yeah before. or had you seen uh, snow uh, really uh, at some, that point? some oh, snow okay. but definitely nothing like those yeah. mountains yeah. Uh, and so uh, in the course of that uh, that's that uh, three year stint, uh, I guess three almost four years uh, during that, uh, I didn't like the climate of the army. Um, you know, desert storm had happened, mm -hmm. came and went. It was just a different culture. After that, there's a lot of cutbacks, and yep. so there was just a, a frankly a lot of kind of backstabbing type stuff going on with people trying to uh, to make sure they came out on top, uh, and I just. Just didn't like the culture that mm -hmm. uh, that I saw, and didn't really want to be part of it anymore. And and uh, went to uh, to get out. Uh, I got out. It came off of active duty. Uh, my commander at the time, um, Captain Jones, who uh, uh, didn't want me to get out, told me that uh, it was a mistake to just give it all up, and and actually wouldn't let me completely walk away. Uh, instead of signing complete discharge orders, for, he. Uh, he only authorized and signed uh, an order to transfer me to the individual ready reserve, uh, which is basically a pool of people who want to want to want or have to have maintain some kind of tie to the military, but don't want to do anything with it. And so you're effectively a civilian who could be called up at okay. any time, mm -hmm. but there's no commitment to put the uniform on or do anything. Uh, on you can let your hair basis. grow out. So exactly, let my hair grow. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of, you know, grew the grew the beard, yeah. uh, grew the hair out. Had a had a probably a stupid looking ponytail. Um, Your I wife's more, over there I mean, nodding, more hair, by the way. Yeah, so, yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't have to look around. Uh, you know, I uh, uh, put an earring in, all kinds of stuff. Uh, you know, kind of went the other direction. That's what my it. dad. My dad always toyed <laughs> with that idea. He never pulled off the earring yeah. or the ponytail. I'm not going to even say. Done. I'm not even going <laughs> to say I pulled it off. I'm just going to say I had it. <laughs> you experimented <laughs> exactly. 
So, now, do you did you cross training? To, obviously, it's not like uh, what you were doing in the army. You could you just hit the civilian workforce and do yeah. That. So, in fact, I tried. Yeah. The, uh, the you know with the there's a lot of recruiting out of the army mm-hmm. uh, for both uh, contract type jobs and then you know your Fortune 500 companies look to the yes. military to find leaders. Uh, you know both skill sets and just uh, just just leadership, yeah. and so uh, there's a lot of uh, private companies that make those connections for you. And I actually did some interviewing when I was thinking about getting out. Uh, did some interviewing with the companies who make these connections and placements, and uh, I was turned down. <laughs> they wouldn't even work with me. So um, not because of my army career, but because of the background that because of the me ponytail. There. The ponytail, no, yeah. you know, it was uh, actually I was still in uniform at the okay, time this was even going on, and I, uh, I wasn't the right material. I had uh, I'd barely finished college. I uh, mm-hmm. think at two point, uh, I think I pulled my grades up to a two point two or so. Please so get degrees, you know, major. Yeah, yeah it's it. You know, yeah. it got me. Some of us had to go through that route. <laughs> yeah, so. so yeah, it was uh, you know they just I guess the attitude uh, in the '90s was uh, you know Fortune 500 uh, uh, they don't like the C's. Yeah. <laughs> at least it doesn't get you looked at. So, so what? Uh, so then what? What? Happens? You know, but it, but I had simultaneously been been considering other things, and and one of those interesting twists. Uh, you get anytime with uh, with the military, you get additional duties that things that aren't your day to day job, right. but just the stuff that has to get done. And and uh, they were asking for a volunteer. And you're never supposed to volunteer either, but they wanted a. Uh, I was in a uh, cavalry unit, so we had helicopters. And being in Colorado, um, in the mountains, there's a need for rescues, and yeah. the uh, county uh, sheriff needed uh, helicopters for various things that went on with uh, with search and rescue. And since we had the helicopters, they were looking for someone to volunteer to be a liaison um, so that, uh, you know, there was a, an individual to coordinate use of uh, helicopters with. So I volunteered for that, and uh, that was really when I discovered this whole world of, of um, emergency response mm-hmm. you know very much the parallel world to the to the military yeah. uh, so uh, the search and rescue team put me through their training and schools and things to become certified in in uh, search and rescue uh, and then they put me through an EMT course so I'd have some some uh, emergency medical skills and it was that EMT course that opened my eyes to the medicine world uh, kind of got me interested and so I decided that uh, you know if corporate world wasn't interested in me I was gonna uh, gonna pursue something uh, in uh, in medicine and uh, that led me to nursing I liked what I saw with the nurses in the emergency room and, mm-hmm. and uh, how they worked the independence they had yeah. uh, so thought that's you know I'll go that route because I've got a lot of options and uh, that led me to being interested in becoming a nurse practitioner because even more things I could do. And so, right. so the Army, even without trying, uh, they were uh, led guiding me to you in these a certain things. direction. Yeah. Uh, I even asked for them, they needed nurses. And so I even asked for uh, assistance with nursing school. Um, and they said no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wasn't nursing school material and uh, or Army nurse material. I'm not sure which. So I uh, did it my own way. Wow. And, uh, you know, did that uh, on my own and and then turned back around and, and became an Army nurse. This is not a plug, by the way, for our... <laughs> we have a Help a Hero program, which is a scholarship program for veterans uh, that are transitioning to civilian workforce. So had that been around yeah. when you were... But it should be a plug for that. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's no, I would, had it been so around. When was this? The mid, this mid was, to late nineties. This was uh, early nineties. Early nineties. Uh, okay. Ninety-two was when I got okay. out of the uh, active duty side. So, uh, early nineties. Yeah. Um, and you would have been a pro. We hey, we wouldn't have turned you down for anything. <laughs> so you guys would we have. Would, we would have snatched you up. That's right. And, yeah, and given that's, you a, a, uh, that's why programs like that are so good yeah. because there's uh, there's, there's a lot of people who fall through the cracks and have potential. I like to think I have potential and and uh, turned around and, and it was kind of fun to reapply to uh, to switch into the Army Nurse Corps yeah. from uh, you know from having been told that I wasn't uh, wasn't cut out for that uh, to come back and, and uh, be able to do that yeah and so uh, that that kind of turned things that way and uh, I got uh, got back into the reserves with uh, through nursing um, it was a time that was also a time when nurses 
uh, nurse practitioners weren't recognized by the Army. So I had this entire skill set uh, because of my EMT background. I'd done a lot of focus on emergency medicine. Um, and I came in with a skill set that, you know, once again, the Army wasn't going to recognize or use. What, so uh, did they want to have you do something completely yeah, different? Yeah, they wanted, they wanted, they needed and wanted nurses. Uh -huh. And so what the Army envisioned me doing was to, to fill uh, your uh Typical nursing nursing uh, jobs, working working on one of the uh, surgical wards, yeah. or uh, you know you can work your way through into ICU. Lots of lots of fantastic opportunities, but uh, I really hadn't come into this with a lot of, of actual nursing experience. I went straight through the two programs, so uh, I graduated and you know as a as a nurse practitioner, and that being my uh, my really my whole background was was focused uh, on this uh, this extra skill set, and so uh, that that made things it was kind of difficult with the army because mm -hmm. they wanted me to do one thing that I felt one I wasn't trained for and two wasn't you know we're back to that's not what I want to do. Um, right. And again, that's not, you know, they call it service for a reason. Yes. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, you don't get to choose everything, but I was still, uh, I was still defiant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but that led to uh, the special operations community saw things in a broader picture. And so um, they saw uh, nursing and, and having a nurse practitioner um, degree and skill set that wasn't, uh, not even recognized by the Army, Army Special Operations said, we see it. We know what it so is. Who, who so who contacts who? They uh, find you or you find out about them? And just It can be it. both. And I'd love to say, you know, they sought me out because right. I, but no, I, I okay. sought them out. Right. You know, um, all this sort of kind of simultaneously happened with 9-11. Mm -hmm. um, so I was looking for, you know, uh, a way in. You know, I was looking for, like a lot of people, revenge, a lot of things. Yeah. You know, a lot of ways to put it, but I was looking for uh, for a new job, and I uh, wanted uh, wanted in. You know, I didn't want to sit uh, stateside in a uh, reserve unit, uh, not not doing something, and I uh, wanted to use the skills that I had, and so uh, that played in nicely. And I, you know, I contacted. I kind of again fell into things. Uh, I asked for any job post 9/11, and so. Um, within a month, I was on orders and I was uh, providing uh, medical services at uh, Fort McClellan, which ironically was the former home of the uh, NBC school. Uh, my oh, original wow. yeah. original school so had all been there. back at, in uh, Georgia or where is this? Uh, this is in Alabama. Okay. And, uh, Not so, too far from So me, suddenly I'm back. Uh, Fort McClellan had been closed down. Uh, they're no longer housed the, uh, the NBC program. And so, uh, but I'm back. I know this post, you know, backwards and forwards. Had you had and, kids the first time you were there? Uh, first time I was there, I had not. No. Newlywed, okay. uh, no kids. Uh, so, but now you're back now with I'm family. back and I've got no. a family yeah. this time. And and, uh, and actually, because of the nature of what was going on with 9-11, we were separated. Mm -hmm. My family was back in North Carolina. And uh, I went to Alabama to do this. And, uh, you know, while I'm there, while I'm at my old stomping grounds, uh, I, Part of what was going on there was uh, they were taking units like what I used to be in with the uh, uh, chemical, uh, particularly chemical decon, uh, decontamination specialists, and they were converting them uh, from a war side mission, uh, a war mission to, you know, operating overseas in a, in a war, uh, wartime theater to doing civilian defense tasks. Uh, so these uh, these these units were going to go and be stationed in New York City and Los Angeles and other big cities that we thought might be targets for mm, right. uh, few, further terrorism yeah. and and they uh, might have be, been targets for right, all we know to right be honest. you know and they'd be stationed there ready to uh, to to Yeesh. clean things up yeah that's uh, horrible to and, think about and so it turned out I'm there to provide direct medical support I'm going to be the the clinic guy I'm going to help people when they get hurt you know if they get sick whatever is going on. Um, but it turns out while I'm there, the uh, you know, hey, they're they're converting these units. That happens to be my old specialty, and they have to teach them how to decon patients. And so that's its own animal because you have to have some medical skills, or at least an understanding of you know, it's fine to clean the chemical uh, uh, chemical agents off of your off of this patient. But if they die from their injuries in the process. Right it was pointless and so so is it kind of like um, all roads are, are kind of coming together for you yeah or you know, have you and, not and, had uh, this all yeah. this other previous experience that really and, yeah. led you to this things place. really fell in yeah. and, and having that skill I was able to not only help with 
teaching these units, but uh, ironically, at the same time, um, special forces units uh, were ramping up to uh, to rotate in over over to yeah. Afghanistan, yeah. and they were training there as well because the uh, a big piece of the base was. Uh, owned by the Alabama National Guard and uh, 20th Special Forces Group. Um, so I had direct interactions with these guys, uh, their medics and uh, their, uh, their, um, their training and everything going on. And that was kind of where it's like, uh, hey, these special operations guys recognize these are the guys, these, these uh, special forces medics are coming in to talk to me ask me questions, confirm what they're doing, if they're doing the right thing with their guys. And so that led to um, realizing that special operations could offer kind of what I was looking for. Yeah. And so uh, that, that started the whole thing. And uh, six months later, I'd managed to get myself transferred in through uh, the reserve system into uh, special operations command uh, through civil affairs. Which is um, where? So that's out of Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Okay, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, now why is your family in North Carolina are, uh, while you're not? So in I was back to being a reservist, and okay. so during all this time leading up to 9 11, we had settled into North Carolina, all right. um, you know, and I was doing the weekend a month thing, um, gotcha. and and um, working, doing you know, learning, learning uh, more skills, just kind of. Uh, I had uh, several positions already as a nurse practitioner in the region, you know, worked my way through these jobs kind of towards the, what I envisioned for myself, right. which was an, a very independently operating um, jack of all trades medic, you know, where I could handle about anything that got thrown at me. Um, and so uh, little did you know exactly that it was yeah, coming full where, circle where all this stuff would yeah. uh, what it means. And so uh, it was kind of a weird twist where uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this thing in North Carolina as a civilian, and six months later, I'm doing exactly what I was doing, and I'm doing it in Afghanistan, uh, and add in so when do you get, at you and a bunch of other stuff going on. When do you get it. deployed then? So <laughs> so, uh, so I got deployed in um, late summer of uh, 02. Um, okay. And, uh, Not even a year into yeah, the war. Yeah, I went to, went to Fort Bragg for some additional training, and... Uh, train up, uh, made some more contacts within the special operations community, kind of, you know, looking, I was really interested in the things that special forces did and does, and, uh, you know, made some more contacts there. And then uh, not long after I got in theater, I had the opportunity to um, transfer over to that side. Mm -hmm. And uh, that sort of steered everything else that uh, one way or another has happened since then. Yeah. So you get over uh, there, uh, are you, on the ground as they're bringing injured in? Are you going out to the, uh, what's going on? Are, are, are you able to talk about that? Oh, uh, yeah. I don't you know, know super I, secrets. Uh, so I don't yeah, want to give well, it away. I tell you, you know, the old joke, I tell you, but I don't have to kill you. you yeah, this yeah, interview uh, and destroy your uh, tapes. Uh, exactly. <laughs> uh, well, uh, yeah, well, I love my family in case uh, we need to. But no, it was, uh, uh, you know, I got in, uh, got in theater and, and, it was right at a point coming in where you know a lot of a lot of the general appearance of things uh, with what was being shown stateside things were were calm and suppressed and uh, and they were in some areas and they weren't in other areas and so I got in theater and uh, you know again started realizing you know I don't want to just sit here in a nice secure base you know in the middle of the city and and uh, um, Kind of feel like I'm. I'm are you an adrenaline States. junkie, or you wanna you wanna be where you feel you'd be most effective? Yeah, you know, probably a little of both. Okay. Uh, definitely, you know, an interest in, in not sitting around yeah. and finding things that that are more a little more thrilling, and and definitely feeling like I came here to do something. Yeah, I can and make a difference. And I can do some good here, but not as much good as I'm really capable of doing, mm -hmm. and so. Um, you know, getting away from that environment, getting out to the uh, the farther reaches where things weren't safe and stable, and where you know s skills that I had could make the difference in life and death. Uh, you know, and it sounds dramatic, but it's yeah, that's reality. just the reality yeah. of it. You know, and in at so many different levels. And uh, one of the interesting things that did happen that uh, you know my one of those cool side stories was uh, I was in the in the primary base for about six weeks to begin with uh, and uh, the day I got there I get grabbed by this guy and no not wearing a uniform uh, who tells me he's a US Army doctor 
um, and tells me I need to come with him. And you know, being the fool that I am, I get in the car with him, get in the get in the vehicle, and and take off. And we leave this fire base or leave this base in the city. And uh, he tells me after we were in the vehicle and leaving you know, what we're going to do, you know, while I'm meanwhile thinking, you know, this could be the last time anyone ever hears from me, yeah. <laughs> you know, no, don't know this guy from anybody, right. but, uh, the King of Afghanistan had, um, wow. had come back from Italy in the, in the process of all this, uh, as things had gotten safer and if, uh, the capital city Kabul had become, yeah. uh, secure and, and, uh, he came back from Italy. Um, he had had some bad experiences with some, uh, some of the, uh, other, NATO countries uh, medical systems um, and only wanted American doctors taking care of them. Mm. And so here I am, a uh, nurse practitioner from North Carolina who is uh, is suddenly put in front of the king of Afghanistan right. and told by this doctor, you know, hey, we've got today and then I'm leaving. So here he is, you know, make the introduction and uh, rapidly get me some credentials to get in and out of the palace. And uh, here you go. And so um, for the first uh, about uh, six weeks of being in Afghanistan, my one of my daily jobs was wow. checking on this guy, going no over, kidding. checking, make sure he's in in good health, and you know doesn't need. Uh, he had some chronic health problems, mm -hmm. and uh, he was uh, at the time was in his uh, 80s, which is unheard of for an Afghan. Yeah. You know that's 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 called living in Italy. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. It, it's a whole other animal with the, some of the views on the king because of his living in Italy while everyone else suffered. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I found it to be a, an incredibly rich opportunity to hear stories of how Afghanistan used to be. His father was considered uh, maybe the greatest king of Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. uh, he had modernized. His English was good, um, or did you? Or are you speaking yeah, a translator? Yeah, so we used the translator. He had limited English okay. uh, at the at the longer I was in country, the more I was able to. Uh, he spoke Dari. You know, another thing in Afghanistan is there's. Many, so many many languages, about, yeah. and so um, I learned some Dari. I could communicate mm -hmm. uh, the basics in Dari, particularly with regard to medical Health, symptoms yeah. uh -huh. and things. Uh, and then he had very limited English. Probably had about as many English words as I had Dari. Yeah. Uh, and then he spoke Italian, and so I uh, I had an interpreter who spoke Italian and English, and so we worked we worked through Italian mostly. Okay. Uh, you know, and then uh, he would uh, he would tell you know tell me stories of when he was a kid and stories of his dad and just all kinds of you know just a rich opportunity right. to do something. You're not that, thinking uh, when you go over there that not even remotely. <laughs> you're living and hit the ground running. You know, and, and again, that's that's already the difference in getting into the special operations side of yeah. things was that wouldn't have even been possible otherwise. Uh, you know, he. Um, Meanwhile, the other thing I'm thinking is if this guy dies on my watch, I'll never work again. You know, he killed the no king. Yeah. You, might, yeah, you might not make it out of the palace. You right. Know? I mean, you know, that kind of thing. It's No matter what, it's, you know, he should have died a long time ago, right. but I'm going to get blamed at this mm -hmm. stage. So um, that was that was kind of one of the cooler things to uh, to do, you know, and then he, he died without an heir, so he was the last king. Mm -hmm. You know, so I... It's almost like the title of a cheesy movie, you know, that, yeah. that I took care of the last yeah, game of Afghanistan. Yeah. Wow, so, you're right. uh, and he didn't die on my watch. Yeah. Ooh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So um, that, that that's, was that's a bragging you know, rights for you there. You know, and uh, as appealing as that was, because there was a lot of merit to that. I was, you know, he would call sometimes in the middle of the night because a, a relative and yeah, for Afghans, yeah, yeah. a relative can be extremely distant. Their family. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, I uh, more than once had uh, an armored uh, SUV show up at the gates uh, with a bunch of guys with AK-47s telling the gate guards they needed me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, uh, uh, the commander understood the, the mission and what, what it entailed and, uh, you know, armed with... Uh, minimal uh you know minimal means to protect myself i'm uh, i'm jumping in this suv with a bunch of big guys with guns and we're leaving and we're going off you know we'll we leave the gate and we turn and it's like okay the palace is the other direction where are we going mm -hmm. tonight uh no interpreter um you know uh there's my adventure and excitement yeah, and here it is 
the guy that corporate America didn't want. Exactly. Yeah, but the Look king of Afghanistan <laughs> is pounding on right? his tent, <laughs> begging him to come. That's yep. amazing. Yeah, that's that's wild. Like, yeah, I'm not going to name companies because it never got no, that far. That's but, still, you know, that's it's just, funny that's, how that's life ironic. takes a turn. Yep. You know, it, uh, so I had, my, I had my adventure. I had things, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't enough. It wasn't yep. where I needed to be. And, and um, you know, so I made the decision to walk away from that and, uh got uh, transfer into a uh, special forces unit to uh, to work directly as, as a field medic. Still in Afghanistan? Uh, still in Afghanistan, okay. um, although arguably we, we crossed into some other countries yeah, at yeah, points. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't have to talk about that. But, yeah, yeah. Well, what about, so are you, have you um, re-upped? Is this the same tour of duty or yeah, have you gone home uh, and back and forth? I'm, I'm in with them at this okay. point, just a, an in-theater transfer, they okay. call it. Uh, and I went through some training with them to to learn uh, more and to uh, make sure that uh, that I can cut the mustard, what, so to what, speak. Give me a sense. Can you give me a sense of what's the fear level? Are you thinking at any point this could be? You know, you had already mentioned when you went out with that doctor, maybe <laughs> then nobody will ever find you again. But is that a constant, or is it something so buried deep that you can't even think about it? It's 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 really more buried deep I and mean, that's probably a coping mechanism right. as well as a honestly the one of the things that that uh, you know I don't want to again I don't don't even like to brag about I'm not even trying to brag about myself one of the things I've learned is that those kind of situations I just go the opposite direction it doesn't mm -hmm. uh, I don't get hyped up and more afraid it's just there's a calm in it that that this is just what I'm supposed to do yeah. this is I'm gonna this is you know I've asked for it. This is what I'm supposed to do, and and so um, that works. You know, it was. Uh, then, I guess can, that's what let me do things like jump into that SUV right, in the middle of the night. Right. Can you <laughs> can you take me into? Um, is your injury amputation is all that related to yeah, this time? It, so it isn't. You know, another one of those things where um, whether it's fate, uh, dumb luck, or you did this to yourself kind mm -hmm. of thing. Um, you know, in this, uh, I got my assignment out to the to the sticks. You know, we were. Is this two thousand? Uh, what year? Two thousand three. It's okay. I'll and so you. we're out. Uh, we're out in a province near Pakistan. Um, we're covering a pretty large area of the theater. Uh, the way they broke things up uh, among the various uh, uh, special operations forces that were out there. Uh, the way they broke things up, we had a pretty good area, to, large area to operate in, and so. Um, you know, I'm out. I'm uh, one of two medics that is uh, in charge of both, both the fire base um, with a very small U.S. contingent uh, and a um, the greater picture. You know, the uh, covering the patrols that we uh, we have going out. That uh, one of us needed to be with every patrol going out. Needed the medic along mm -hmm. with uh, in case something happened. So um, it gave me a lot of you know that original what I was looking for getting out. Um, yep. Ironically, you know, I had a, had a couple of different things happen because stuff happens all the time when you're when you're operating in these environments. You know, injuries are common, and uh, you you weigh injuries against you know showstoppers, um, something that slows that slows the show down and like an intermission, and then you know the stuff that you just keep on moving through and and uh, what eventually you know in the long term cost me my leg was uh was one of those uh you move right through it and uh, uh i was outside of the wire we go out uh we go outside of the primary uh walls of the fire base for training and and our operations and then uh we had uh, uh the area had been generally cleared of landmines or marked and we had some some courses you could go out and and uh, uh do your fitness you know not have to run uh, 400 laps around the uh, the inside walls of okay. the base to get uh, to get a two mile run in. You could run out. We had about a uh, six kilometer course cleared. You could run out and back. Um, there were some dips in that. There were some areas. The uh, we had a, a guard in in a uh, uh, tower that could see most of the time. So uh, it's somebody with a weapon watching you as you went. Mm. Uh, but there were some low spots and some dips out there. And so I went out on uh, one of you know, a whole bunch of runs that I'd been on, and uh, that particular day, there was some old villages, there was a, a lot of old uh, ruins out in this area, and uh, uh, somebody somebody out there, uh, you know, it's not too hard to watch from afar, and probably figured out 
uh, you know, an easy spot that uh, that we were out in. And if you can't see the guard tower, the guard tower can't see right. you. And uh, shot off uh, an RPG uh, that uh, didn't hit me, just uh, it hit uh, because of the terrain. So, and you're that, by yourself. Uh, are you by yourself, or you running with buddies? Yeah, I'm out by myself. Okay. Uh, we we would ruck and do this. Uh, we go out on this course. You know, somebody you was felt out there pretty almost secure. Every day. Right? As secure yeah, as you probably could, yeah. But you generally go out with a minimum of a of a pistol and a radio, mm -hmm. and uh, so that you can communicate and you can uh, can defend. at least defend yeah. yourself up close. You know, and this was, uh, somebody shot this thing, it blew up nearby. You know, I felt the concussion, the dirt, uh, you know, felt stuff hit, but there was no, uh, it wasn't like some dramatic uh, Hollywood scene or anything else. No, tonight is just, your ears aren't ringing. They're ringing, okay. yeah. It was definitely enough okay. to, uh, you know, ears That's ringing. That's what I think of Hollywood. A little you know, bit of disoriented, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah okay. you know. You know, I wasn't, uh, you know, thrown through the air. Oh, know, I and, see. Uh, like, yeah, right yeah you know, and I, I uh, you know, my immediate thing is like, where to come from? You know, is there a guy nearby that is going to try again to, to kill me? Um, you know, don't can't don't see anybody. Uh, find a you know get to a lower spot on the on the trail, which uh, which also involves in some cases and and in this case taking a risk of dropping into the areas where there's. It's uncertain about landmines, so uh, get the risk of hitting a landmine in the process. And okay. uh, you know, I uh, I call for help, and uh, they send out uh, you know within uh, a minute or so, I've got you know trucks and guns and more people out there, mm -hmm. and they uh, they swept the area, didn't couldn't find anybody. Um, you know, I I no trace a, of where it came from either. Yeah, I mean, no no trace of where it came from. You know, because I it was it took me by enough surprise yeah. it wasn't uh you know somebody just shot it was uh it was pretty much uh that was you know, the moment of the explosion was what happened you know yeah. what i knew when i knew somebody targeted me yeah. and so um you know at that point it's like oh you know i'm bleeding <laughs> yeah so uh, um, wh where is is there a ton of pain you're still in shock what yeah there wasn't a lot of pain and, okay. and you know just a quick quick you know doing doing my own assessment because I, you know, again, I'm yeah, a medic, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, and there's, I can see I've got, you know, looks lots of little puncture wounds and, okay. uh, uh, more on my right leg than my left leg. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it's, uh, okay. So nothing's bleeding severely, you know, it's Did you have fine. movement? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, everything worked. Um, uh, mm -hmm. this really was that, uh, you know, gonna, gonna keep on operating right through this, you mm -hmm. know, could do whatever. So when we go back to the fire base, uh, clean things up, you know, pick out anything visible and, and uh, wash everything and, and uh, start myself on some antibiotics because everything's contaminated and yeah. uh, and move on, you know, not a, not really that big of a deal. And really? so were you able uh, to walk? Yeah, yeah, you know, again, this is superficial. This thing hit, it hit something, uh, it hit the rocks, uh, you know, from the look of it, it splattered off, uh, splattered off some of the, there's a lot of rocky outcroppings. This, mm -hmm. You know, for anybody that hasn't seen pictures of Afghanistan yet, for some reason, in desert, right. uh, you envision it's uh, it's rocky, caves, uh, and, yep. mountains, yep. Uh, you know, lots of uh, lots of hills and outcrops, and this thing splattered off of uh, splattered off of that. And what I got was the like collateral, you know, you know the, yeah, yeah, you know, spray it's, it's been slowed down, broken up, and and otherwise, you know, not lethal anymore. Um, and so, you know, cleaned things up and moved on, and. Uh, uh, I had had some other injuries while I was there, uh, stayed in theater with all of this. Um, and then when I got back to, uh, to Fort Bragg, uh, we saw how, that's which when, is how long this was another gosh, three months, two months. So do you um, keep operating as normal? Like you're yeah. going out, you're doing your thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. You know, again, it's, it's the timing of it, you know, at our, uh, at this point in the in the, uh, in the war, we've got uh, I think at the time we officially had around thirteen thousand yeah. uh, troops in really theater, is. and they the majority were concentrated in particular areas. We we were out there. We had a twelve man team with another twelve man team occupying space next door. A um, uh, couple of uh, civil affairs teams of four to six people and some counterintelligence guys and a, a really small. Uh, security force uh, to uh, to protect the the walls, the area that, you know within the walls, and so uh, that was typical. There wasn't uh, there wasn't a lot of backup. There wasn't uh, there wasn't a, a large force 
just down the road to uh, to come in, you know, we were it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, to take out 50% of the medical assets, yeah, I was gonna say, so. you know, right there with no guarantees of someone else, you know, the reason I stepped into this position was, you know, Special Forces was already short medics. Yeah. And so there were teams out there operating with one medic. Um, everyone on the team's cross-trained, so you've got skills within everybody, but still only one medic. And yeah. so being the second medic, I didn't want to – um, leave and, and you felt this responsibility, felt, uh, this burden yeah. to, to yeah. stay. Yeah. Yeah. So we got back to Fort Bragg and, and took care of things there. Uh, you know, I had surgery to, uh, to clean that up, fix my knees, get, uh, get things all. Had you had a, a lingering pain and all that from not really the from wound? the, not from that, you know, I'd had some, uh, I blew out both knees and, and, uh, a ruptured a disc in my back. Uh, you know, again, a lot of things happen while you're mm -hmm. there. So we had uh, wrecked, uh, you know, wrecked trucks a couple times, drove one off of a, a dry waterfall uh, at night. Uh, wow. You know, different things, uh, not wearing seat belts because mm -hmm. we, were, we were using uh, small toy. We were using Toyota Hilux pickups, mm -hmm. which is, uh, is basically the, uh, the crew cab short bed uh, pickup that you'd see here in the in the Toyota Tacomas and um, not a lot of room when you get a guy in there with full full yeah, kit on right, and right, uh, you up. know yeah. by the way we're going to put five big guys in here four big guys in here uh, so you know the we tended to not wear the seat belts and so think you hit you you had your collisions with the inside of the vehicle and and uh, you know again you moved on so then what what um, goes what wrong might be the not the word to <laughs> use here but what goes wrong with your recovery from the surgeries that lead to uh, amputation and complications and all yeah, that. Yeah, and you know, it's it's everything seemed really good for a while. Because you're probably not uh, even thinking that's a possibility at this point. You, you, I'm not. You yeah. know, I'm not. I'm. I'm. This was again. This was minor. You know, we had uh, we had a guy uh, lose lose a leg in you know in in theater mm -hmm. lose a leg uh, you know in our. Uh, um, in our area of operations, one of the guys on uh, on the the second team lost his leg. You know when uh, um, they would take uh, mines and and remine roads behind you. They would uh, they'd rig them into IEDs. You know lots mm -hmm. of uh, lots of ways everywhere you go. Someone's trying to kill you. Uh, we had already had someone lose a leg. Um, you know had other other injuries and so. I'm not even thinking about mine at that stage. Yeah. You know, it's it was it was minor enough that, you know, there's bigger things going on, and so, um, you know, it was really uh, I did pretty well after they got things fixed at Fort Bragg. Um, I had some I had some leg pain. I shouldn't say I didn't have any pain. I I had some joint pain as a result of everything. Um, you know, it. Uh, but you're walking, again, running, I'm walking, doing running, whatever. Back okay. to you know, my focus was getting fit for duty so wait is this 2004 back. now uh we're still we're still into 2003 late okay. 2003 yeah getting into november 2003 by this point and uh you know my focus is getting fit for duty so i can go back mm -hmm. you know that's uh the war's not over uh yeah. we're in iraq now as well so you know it's uh it's get fit and go back um I started having infections, you know, and that mm. was the first sign that something wasn't right. Uh, I, I continued to have some, you know, that, that knee and, and a little bit of leg pain, yeah. um, along with continuing to just, I'm, I'm in a, in an airborne unit, uh, you know, jumping out of airplanes and helicopters and, and, uh, running around in the field with, with, uh, you know, combat gear plus medical gear. You, you sprain ankles and you injure knees anyway. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm re-injuring my, uh, particularly my knee, uh, you know, more uh, more and more. And uh, then I started developing these infections. Uh, Is this, now are you back or are you home? Uh, I'm home at this stage. When the infections yeah. start. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and so, uh, uh, you know, now I'm missing, uh, starting to miss duty for these things. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, we had an Iraq deployment that uh, at the time had, uh, had injured that leg again. Um, and uh, was was on a delayed status for the deployment uh, because I was on crutches and in a cast and and uh, you're in no condition to you go. Know, can't yeah, yeah yeah much as I would like to go that's probably pretty stupid mm -hmm. even for me right <laughs> um, and so uh, you know all this going on it really I still didn't 
there still wasn't a big picture thing. It was just unrelated events, you know, but these infections uh, ultimately turned out because I had this crap in my leg. Um, I had some hardware in there, uh, you know, some, some orthopedic screws that uh, uh, had been there from, from uh, previous injuries. Um, it was just places for bugs to hide still. Mm -hmm. And so uh, these bugs would lay, in, lay dormant in my system uh, and then uh, decide to come back up, you know, something. How long do you battle these infections? Uh, all the way up till the last one came out in 2014, uh, August of 2014, and, uh, or late July, and uh, just ate my leg up. Uh, that one was the one that went from um, bad to um, really, really, really bad. Mm -hmm. It almost killed me. I was going to uh, say, uh, that at point, what point you is know, your life threatened? Yeah, through this, uh, you know, the uh, most people have heard of necrotizing fasciitis, and so the uh, the infection in my lower leg turned into necrotizing fasciitis. Um, it's uh, it's in the joints uh it's in the in the bone it's uh it's now also gotten out and into my bloodstream right. and so your heart it's, and, yeah, yeah my kidneys are wanting to shut down yeah. uh you know i'm i'm effectively dying this thing's killing me and uh i think at some point in there it was about a 10% chance to live with the combination of everything that was going on and so um you know really the focus became who cares about the leg Let's right. Keep who, him alive. Who has that? Who has that conversation first? Does the doctor bring it to your attention, or are you bring it up? Like, hey, what? I was bringing it up actually. Yeah. I was. No, I you just know. kept. You know, right. I'm like, just cut my leg off. Just cut my leg off. Okay. You know, just just end this. Get the leg off my body. You know, I was mad because they weren't doing that. You know, it turns out they weren't doing it because they were trying to save my life. Right. And they also had the foresight to know that you know every inch of leg saved if it's going to get cut off translates into function yeah. you know the longer you the more leg you save the more functional you're gonna be yeah. so they were trying to give me a fighting chance after an amputation mm -hmm. um so once i survived the uh all the the you know the uh infection the course of the infection and and uh they felt like they got that out of my system. I was finally off of uh, off of antibiotics. And you still had your leg. I uh, still had the leg, okay. but at this point, the uh, the leg had become completely useless. The, mm -hmm. My knee was fused. My ankle was uh, partially fused, uh, just due to uh, that was the damage the infection caused. Uh, it uh, destroyed the joints uh, along with the soft tissue, and then the when the bone when my body was trying to grow the the bone back for the joints, it kind of got miscommunicated because of all the infection going on and created bone where there wasn't supposed to be bone and so I ended up with joints that didn't work. Too, uh, it is point, the muscles yeah. are not only they had had to cut out a lot of muscle but the muscle left is severely atrophied mm -hmm. um and i can't use my knee or my ankle and uh we stopped uh, about two weeks after the antibiotics um after i finished the antibiotics the infection came back you know and so oh the writing gosh. was just on the wall for right. me because um, any options they talk about with, with saving the leg and, and maybe getting it back to function um, hinge around a, a minimum of a year being infection-free. And so every time the infection would come back, that clock's going to start over. Yeah. And so that was the point. It's like the leg's got to come off now. And, and this is 2014? Now we've hit uh, 2014 still. Uh, and then we were uh, – I was able to – or had it electively amputated in February of uh, 2015. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and so that was another one of those. At, at Walt, uh, is this Fort Bragg, Walter this is, Reed? Uh, or is now this? I'm at uh, now I'm in Georgia. My wife's okay. family's from Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, there's a whole another side story in that, you know, of, of PTSD and the effects of brain injuries that you know has kind of multiple paths here. Now we're mm -hmm. we've gone. I've gone from Fort Bragg and and uh, being in North Carolina to. Um, you know, going back reserve status and then uh, making the decision to move to Georgia. Uh, and so now uh, you, you got uh, to choose that or as a reservist, you do. Okay. That's another that's an advantage okay. to the reserves is you can essentially seek out your own assignments right. and uh, and take those. And so um, I was getting worse physically. Uh, I was not able to jump out of airplanes anymore. Mm -hmm. um, it was clear that I was probably not going to be able to deploy the things that that meant something militarily were, were fading, yeah. you know, being taken away from Not me. just probably um, militarily. They, they probably meant something emotionally, right? Most definitely. I mean, that I mean was, that's part you know, of the, that's part of the problem were, with transition right. is, you you know, lost of that identity mm -hmm. uh, because it is a, 
it really is a, uh, a whole identity. Um, so, you know, we had, uh, we'd moved to Georgia to be closer to family. Um, uh, it is, it's almost like uh, in the military they'll do bereavement assignments. If, uh, right. You know, this yeah. is like for you. Yeah, it for me was it's that. the ability to, yeah, to, Emotional to take support. this on ourselves. Yeah. yeah, and go where we have the best support and yeah. go where things are going to be the best for, for our kids. And, you know, and thinking of, uh, you know, uh, medical care. We've got a, a major, a much bigger medical center in, in Georgia than, than at Fort Bragg. Um, so generally a good place to be mm-hmm. for the, the place, the state that I was in at that point. And, uh, you know, somewhere in all that, the, uh, you know, my world came crashing down. Uh, it, it uh, uh, came crashing down mentally, not just physically, okay. you know, and that's, uh, that's the side that, that uh, really hits you like a ton of bricks because, you know, I'm strong. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I've yeah. been in, in Afghanistan and, and you, yeah. I've done special forces things and I've done, you know, I was, uh, I was doing, uh, my emergency responder stuff had escalated up to where mm-hmm. I was working with law enforcement as a SWAT medic, real similar to what you get to do. In, hey, in you DeBoer. were the personal <laughs> medic for the King of yeah. Afghanistan. So your resume <laughs> at this point, but, but emotionally and mentally, yeah, it, you're, it's, it's it, just it, starting to come apart. Okay. You know, there was a, there was a long period of, of, covering some covering things up even to myself you know refusing to acknowledge feelings that are there and who's noticing who's noticing who's noticing it who's saying something to you you know my family my wife my kids they know you know dad is in a really bad way it's you know physically things had gotten bad from the from the the infections and the the problems coming from the infections i'm taking pain meds Mm -hmm. uh you know i'm taking lots of pain meds um there was a long period where to stay fit for duty the army was happy to keep giving me pain meds um and i'm i'm uh you know i'm feeling like i'm functioning but those those are just covering things up and, and actually making them worse and uh you know that just suddenly just all fell apart you know and there's not uh it's hard to say what really made it fall apart but everything that was working suddenly wasn't working anymore. what what did it what did it look like when things fell apart like um, um you know it's it's uh, outbursts uh withdraw i mean what you know i had uh i'm going through uh you know i'm going through the effects of being on pain medicines you know mm-hmm. so i've got uh you know, I've got uh, cravings to take them. I've got, uh, I'm taking pain meds to avoid the withdrawal effects of not taking pain meds. I'm in this vicious stew. Yeah. You know, meanwhile, those pain meds have helped to mask PTSD and, and uh, probably the effects of, of brain injury, uh, you know, mask it really well so that I'm functioning and doing things. And then all of a sudden I can't anymore, mm-hmm. you know. You just get to a point the, the you can't take enough of the pain meds to have the effect it used to have so that it it covers things up and so suddenly you just i can't push out the bad feelings and i can't push out the you know this darkness this cloud that is yeah. over seems like it's over everything in my life and so um you know this is all in this this mashup between about 2009 and uh and you know when my leg got completely what, trashed was in the leg was the leg the breaking point you know, it. the leg was almost the healing point, oh, okay. oddly enough. All it's right. one of those weird things where all the bad stuff led up to the point that the leg needed to come off. Mm-hmm. And um, cutting the leg off, I don't know why, probably because now I have an outward sign of everything that's gone on. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not, um, everything's not just inside me. Suddenly people see the missing leg and they um, they recognize what's gone on they recognize you know it's very visible where ptsd traumatic brain injury the hidden wounds of war you know we don't see those and so people don't acknowledge them we don't want to talk about them we don't want to accept that that soldier uh that marine whoever that looks so great in uniform we're so proud of might be going through a lot of really bad shit Mm -hmm. and uh so they're um you know having my leg cut off suddenly people are you know thank you for your service and and suddenly it's um, just that you know, start putting you in the right direction you know pushing you in the right direction it was it was it was part of the big picture you okay. know the losing the leg was probably a uh, a big factor because it suddenly made a lot of internal things very outward mm-hmm. uh, um 
getting uh, right around the time just before really losing the use of the leg and then losing the leg, I got my service dog. Um, mm-hmm. Rory, Rory really turned some mm-hmm. things around for the whole family. The, uh, the entire family dynamic took this major pivot when we got Rory. Um, how, you know, how old is Rory uh, now? Rory's seven now. So he was still a puppy-ish. He was pretty when, much 18, yeah. 19 months old okay. and very puppy-ish. Mm-hmm. So you still <laughs> had to, bra- uh, even though he was a certified <laughs> service dog by that point, right? Yeah. You had to kind of ease him in. You were his first. Yeah, he was, owner. I was his first. Yeah. We were, he was my first service dog yeah. and I was his first, uh, human mm-hmm. <laughs> beyond trainers and such. And, yeah. and, uh, you know, so he was a great he's a great dog you know and and he's a lot like me he tested every limit Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know found the boundaries pushed beyond him um you know came back when he felt like he needed to and and you know we we worked out this dynamic over a couple of months together where you know we we really came to an understanding with how things were going to work with us and and uh you know meanwhile everything in the family is kind of rosier because this dog is coming that's incredible you know, and I don't want to make it sound like the, you know, it's just the dog because, you know, meanwhile, you know, I've gotten some treatment for some things. My family's gotten some treatment mm-hmm. and for some things. We've had a lot of help from outside organizations who are getting resources for us, you know, and, and uh, my wife has stayed with me through all this. Uh, how, and, many uh, how many years? How many years? 30 Mary. years in uh, incredible. less than a month. That is incredible for everything <laughs> so, that you've been through. Yeah. 30 yeah. years. Is... It's something that shouldn't be in all this, and yeah. yet it is. And so... You um, married well, obviously. Apparently, I did. I they always told me I married up. Mm, yeah. but I didn't really know what it mm-hmm. meant before. So, well, I, I I've met her, and she's off camera right now. But uh, yes, you did. Great job. Great job. Because she's in you the room. You chose well. Not You're just good, saying it because she's in the room. You're a good decision maker. <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So there was a lot of forces that really came together. Yeah. You know, and it was. Uh, um, it just was the was the turn, you know, and I think losing the leg just gave uh, gave me the freedom to let go of some things, mm-hmm. you know, beyond the physical. And it's again, it's it's kind of almost too cliched, yeah. but Symbolic. it really is kind of what happened. There yeah. was just uh, that just continued this shift from uh, from being this collective ball of stuff that was a real jerk to trying to become human again, yeah. um, you know, and all these things that came into play that. Uh, that just turned things around for me. And you are such a go-getter that you're, there's, uh, is it America Service Dog Association or something? You're like on the board? Yeah. They, uh, tell so me about Rory, that. Rory came from America's Vet Dogs. Okay, uh, America's Vet Dogs. And uh, they, uh, and the uh, the Guide Dog Foundation for the Blind, that's their, their parent organization, uh-huh. um, out of New York, uh, Long Island. And they, um they've done so much getting the service dog meant so much you know the way it turned the family around and and i had a thing for dogs anyway but it Mm -hmm. was seeing what the power of the dog and the healing power of the dog so beyond me you know and so i uh i wanted to give back so i've uh i've have uh, gotten on the board of directors um as a volunteer and and i uh i give time to um, I sit with a lot of people with a lot of initials behind their names that mm-hmm. can talk about things from a business standpoint that are just over my head. Uh, but I can I can talk about the realities. You know, when yeah. you're going to spend money, what what you're, is you're the expert in the room? The, yeah. You know, the reminder that that uh, you know at the end of the day, it's about getting these dogs to veterans uh, and first responders, um, mm-hmm. getting these dogs to to change lives, and so. Um, if I don't do anything else, you know, that's my job, uh, is to, are, to are you, remind them of that. Are you in, do you think you're in this good of a place mentally without Rory? I'd say no. Um, but that, and I'm not feeling like we're not, this is not a PSA. No, for exactly. This. It's not. It's just, I want to know, it's like not. it really it's, could a could an animal make um, that much of a difference? I think and, it does. Yeah. And I think it's just, it's just a neutral, non-judgmental. I'm there mm-hmm. for everybody, you know, mm-hmm. and it just, uh, it just changes the, you know, changes the mood. If, if nothing else, it creates an opening because I'm calmer, I'm nicer. I'm, uh, uh, it's really hard to, you know, talk baby, talk to your dog and, you know, you're, you pet yeah. them and they're there for you and then turn around and, and jump down somebody's throat, yeah. you know, so you, you just change it's the a, family, like family a dynamic and yeah, you create a, that, yeah. and you create a window where people yeah. are, we can, we're nicer and we can start to actually talk and work things out. And I love so, that. 
He really did, you know, and I, and one of my things I say is, you know, it took a, 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 an animal to, you know, make me more human. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and that's what he's done. So I, uh, and I'm going to wrap this up in just a second, but uh, you, uh, wife of 30 years, she's getting ready to retire. Yeah. Right? And ride off in the <laughs> sunset with you. Uh, you've got literally a son, <laughs> yeah, a son who is in the Air Force Academy. Yep. Right. Uh, mechanical engineer uh, is mechanical engineering okay. and he's a uh, third year there so. you're not proud of him at all i nah, get it not and a, then not uh, and then your daughter is <laughs> uh, in dentistry school she is, or, okay. uh, she's in dental school okay. now uh, she's uh, started her second year of dental school and, and joining she is already in she's, oh, okay. uh, she had to outdo her brother because she's okay. the big sister so uh-huh. uh, he's a cadet until he graduates and then he'll become a second lieutenant yep um, she just took the short route and got into dental school, and, and they made her a second lieutenant right that. away. In, so. de- in demand. Yeah. So, so my question, <laughs> so what's next for you? Um, you know, I am, uh, I've started a nonprofit. Okay. Uh, in adaptive sports has been a go-to over the last mm. few years, and that was, again, something that would not have been available had I not lost my leg. Um, and that became real meaningful too in, in uh, healing and recovery. And, and it also got me out, met a lot of great people, a lot yeah. of great organizations. Uh, and then I realized that people in my own hometown, fellow vets, don't necessarily have the luxury of traveling all over the country to do these things. So, and what's a, what's the um, nonprofit called? So uh, we're called Fight On. Okay. Uh, we are a uh, part of uh, Forces United. We joined with another nonprofit with okay. a, a larger umbrella um, and uh, of coverage. Uh, and so uh, I'm providing uh, ac- adaptive sports and activities as well as general health and wellness activities for uh, for veterans and their families as well as our local first responders. Um, and is it local uh, or is it? It's it's local with, with goals of eventually a okay. national reach. Do you have a um, website or we Facebook do. page, uh, we all have that? Facebook page. Okay. We're, uh, we're at Vets Fight On. All right. Uh, it's plural vets. Okay. Uh, and then uh, we are uh, we also have uh, uh, vetsfighton.org uh, is our uh, our web page, uh, and then you can also find us under Forces United on Facebook. And you uh, didn't know I was going to ask these so questions, so I, I mean, those you're are, prepared. I like it, there, but you know, I, I you know uh, you didn't say, hey, I'll do this interview <laughs> if I can plug my <laughs> stuff. No, I, no, uh, I'm, no, I'm I didn't, genuinely uh, didn't expect to. I'll yeah. tell you, you know, but we're I'm trying to give back. Um, I'm trying to, uh, to to pay this forward now. It Suddenly the luster wasn't there on traveling and doing these things as much as it used to be. And, yeah. and I kind of realized that that was because it's time for me to start giving that, not just being the guy who's getting to, to have all the fun. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's yeah, it's, uh, it's part of the next adventure. And then, of course, with, uh, with Ann retiring, uh, you know, you say yeah. drive off into the sunset. And we yeah. really are going to drive off into the sunset. I love we've, it. Uh, we've got a van uh it's been uh converted for uh for camping and uh you know we're, we're planning to to hit the road uh when when uh, time allows uh you know get out there and travel until so. until grandkids come in the picture <laughs> and then you're gonna shift into another gear <laughs> we got we got some time got a little on that. time yeah. here that's the good thing so uh three questions then i'll let you get out of here uh these are the final three <laughs> just fun hey, this is how we end it all right question number one when they make the movie telling the story of your life <laughs> who do you want to play the lead character the lead character uh right now i'd say uh bradley cooper oh great yeah. choice yeah. that's my guy <laughs> i love me some bradley cooper is that what your wife wants that's i think that's I okay I she's she's, she's a, yeah that. uh-huh she's, she's agreeing with, with that. that uh full-heartedly <laughs> uh okay uh, number two what should the title of that movie be oh man the title of that movie that's a good one so uh We'll call it Wayward Days. Wayward Days yeah. and D A Z E <laughs> yeah. or D okay D A Z E. Okay, I like so. it. Um, is there a story there? Uh, there might be. Okay, all right. Well, that'll be the second uh, part two. You yeah. gotta you gotta have me exactly. on again if you want to hear more. Uh, the third uh, third question: um, the soundtrack. Which band do you want doing the soundtrack? Oh movie? wow! So soundtrack to this one, you know, man, it's a toss up because. There's a lot of good country music out mm-hmm. there, and uh, you know, if I was gonna, we're gonna go with the Black Panther theme here, with kind of sticking to one one primary yeah. artist. Yeah. Um, 
I just say Dave Matthews Band. Oh, nice. Okay, I love <laughs> you me know, some Dave just, Matthews. Band. Uh, just because we got it all. Dave yeah. Matthews runs yep. across genres. Mm-hmm. He can do you know, the slow stuff. Yeah, exactly. Pick it up. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So uh, he's gonna. It's gonna cross through all the all the types of music we need for this to work. Oh, good. We'll tag Dave Matthews in this there podcast and see if, uh, if they'll uh, <laughs> Maybe I'll get invite to you out. Someday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Backstage and stuff. But. Um, you know, I told you what my sweet spot is of a podcast, and if we ran over, so be it. Notice I didn't stop recording because yeah. this was this was epic. <laughs> I don't even know how long um, we've been talking it, it, for. Long, been longer than uh, than than <laughs> I had told you I'd keep you here, but that's because you you've done yeah, this is amazing, and obviously, thank you for your service. Yeah, it's uh, always my honor, e- e- even if you hadn't suffered any sort of physical or what just the fact that you served uh yes. you had that desire that heart to do it and it's been an honor retelling just how you got here and everything that you've pushed yourself and your uh and what and your family support and of course hearing about rory this has been <laughs> such an amazing time so thank you uh for carving out some time for us i think is it are you going car shopping today? Is that what I? Uh, we're finishing okay, car shopping. Okay, we, okay, okay. Uh, we bought a bought one a couple of days ago. Okay, so, all right. Uh, it's another interesting dynamic. Well, good luck with all uh, of that. Hopefully, yeah. that one goes quicker <laughs> yeah. than me keeping you here this whole time. <laughs> yeah, but. we're we're basically just, just we got to finish some paperwork. So <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I hope uh, I know Sport Clips. We're going to do Alethea Foundation. We're going to continue. I hope next year I get to see you again. We we barely we barely even talked about the Walter Reed and all of that oh, no, stuff yeah, today. That just, that'll uh, be another podcast down the road. <laughs> but uh, I really wanted to capture your story and and hear about it. So. Um, Thanks again. Yeah, I've enjoyed talking to you. All right. Thank you, man.